Hey, church family. Uh, it's Zach here again. I'm coming to you here today from our church's worship center. Uh, this is a place where normally, in the normal uh, rhythm of life, our church comes together every Lord's Day to worship God together, to, uh, to celebrate the gospel together, to pray and sing uh, to the Lord together. Uh, it's where we come together to, to encourage one another in our faith and, and uh, enjoy fellowship and friendship, relationship with one another. This is where so much encouragement um, and uh, counsel and prayer for one another goes on uh, from week to week in the life of our church. And uh, for the last five weeks, this place has been empty. This room has been empty. We haven't been able to, to meet together in person as one church for the last five weeks. And um, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but as this whole situation goes on, people are getting more and more restless uh, and ready to return to life, to get back to normal. I'm guessing you're feeling that way. I'm certainly feeling that way. Um, I don't want to be stuck at home. I don't want to have to uh, stay inside. Uh, I want to be able to go out with my family and and uh, I want to hug some people. You know, I want to I want to uh, interact with people, um, especially those in our church. I want to see you again. I want to be with you again. I want to worship with you in the same room again. I, I want to get past this um, weekly worship service thing where you have to look at me and Kyle's faces that's not what that's not what uh, worship in the local church is about you know we're trying to make the best of this situation but we're getting ready to get back to life and I know a lot of people are throughout our country and we're and we're at a point where uh, our governments both you know federal government and state governments and even local uh, local governments are starting to talk about reopening. You know, that's on everyone's mind right now. Reopening our country, reopening our economy, reopening our states, reopening our cities, getting back to life, getting getting uh, back into a normal rhythm as best we can. And included in those discussions are discussions about uh, the reopening of our churches. Um. And uh, we're thinking about that in in regard to our specific local church here uh, in the Front Range, along the Front Range. We're talking about, thinking about, praying about what the best way would be to reopen our church. And, um, and there's something that's becoming quite obvious uh, as time goes on. And as we think about these things, and as you hear these things discussed, uh, by our government leaders and and uh, officials who are in charge of you know reopening the country. One thing we're hearing is that reopening is going to be a process. There's no magic reset button here. Um, as a country, we're not just going to go back on one you know magical day to to living life exactly the way we were living it six weeks ago. That's just not going to happen. Um, I, for one, was certainly hopeful that that would be the case when this all started. I just expected that, you know, okay, we're going to stay at home for a bit, and then there's going to be one one day where it's declared that we can all go back to life uh, like normal, and that's just not going to happen. It's not going to go. It's not going to happen on any level of society, um, and that includes our churches most churches. It certainly includes our church. Um, the reality is starting to set in that there's not going to be just one one day where we all can come back at once and, and be together in the same place on the same day. That's likely not going to be the case. Uh, reopening for our church is going to be a process. I think that's that's uh, one thing that's abundantly clear at this point. 
there's going to be a lot for us to think through in the coming days um, as leaders, as pastors. Uh, we're going to have to think through uh, when to reopen. We're going to have to think through how to reopen. We're going to have to think through what standards are going to need to be in place for us to reopen. What rules we might have to follow as a church in order to reopen well. Um, you know, there's going to be phases to this process. And um, one of the things I'm thinking through, in addition to all of this, is the fact that um, because there's there's going to be a process to reopening, um, I suspect that there are also going to be uh, a great deal of differences of opinion regarding how we ought to reopen and when. Um, you know, if you listen to how people talk about how our federal government, for example, has handled this whole situation, there are lots of different opinions about that. Some people think that we moved way too slowly. Some people think that we took uh, far too drastic of measures to, to prevent the spread of, of the coronavirus. Um, we all have different opinions about how this whole situation has been handled. And I think that's going to apply, and that's going to be the case when it comes to the way our churches reopen. I think it's going to be the case uh, in regard to how our specific church reopens. Our little church here in Lafayette, Colorado, I think there's going to be a lot of different opinions within our church, within the members of our church, about how and when we should uh, we should reopen and try to get back to normal. And that's okay. You know, in one sense, that's, that's totally okay. The reason people have opinions and the reason we have strong opinions about things is usually because we care about the subjects uh, to which we have opinions about. Um, and I certainly expect that to be true in the case of our church. I think a lot of us are going to have different opinions about how to reopen the church because for the very, you know, for the very specific reason that we care about our church. We want to, we want to be together again. We want to worship the Lord together again. We want to see this, this church continue to thrive and grow uh, as it has been, you know, over the last couple of years, especially. We want to see the work of God continue in and through this church. Um, and I'm, I'm with you a hundred percent in that. Uh, you know, I, I think all of us are united in that perspective. We want to, we want to get back to doing what God has called us to do. We're trying to make the best of the current situation, but we want to, we want to get back to doing what, what we were doing before. Um, and so I understand that that uh, a lot of us are going to have different opinions about how to how to reopen our church, and I understand that those opinions are going to be very strong opinions in some cases. And I understand, and I I believe wholeheartedly that the reason those opinions are going to be so strong is because we care about this church. We we care about um, the mission of the church and getting back to it. We all care about that, and I love that. I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, just humbled and excited to be a part of a church that's that's uh, excited about the the mission that God has put us on to make disciples of Christ uh, until He returns. However, however, I also understand that when we have you know when anyone has strong opinions about anything. Um, you have to be very careful about the way you share those opinions and the way that you communicate those opinions because if you don't do it right, um, you can cause a, a great deal of division with those that you're, you're sharing your opinions with. Um, and that's something that I'm thinking about here. In addition to reopening, I'm also thinking about the potential that um, that that we might face the the possibility that may may um, we may experience in the coming days and weeks and even months of this process of reopening 
there's going to be a pro, uh, the possibility of division among us because of how differently we might approach the question of how and when to reopen our church. And there's a passage that's on my mind right now that I think is really relevant um, to us as we prepare um, to deal with that possibility of division. I want to I encourage you to maybe be thinking about passages like Ephesians 4. 1 to 3, for example, where Paul says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Why do I think that's a relevant passage uh, for the question of reopening? Well, I think it's it's relevant because the things that are going to be needed to reopen well are not primarily um, related to the actual decisions that have to be made in order to get us reopened. What's going to be most necessary to reopening well as a church are going to be the things that Paul mentions here in that in this passage: humility, and gentleness, and patience. And bearing with one another in love and an intentional pursuit uh, of unity among us, among our members, intentional protection and preservation of the unity that Christ has given us through his death and that the Spirit of God um, has created for us by drawing us all to faith in Jesus. Reopening well is going to require loads and loads of grace and patience with one another and uh, forbearance and, um, and in, intentionality when it comes to preserving our unity with one another. Those are the things that are going to be necessary to reopening our church well. We're likely not going to all be together on one magical Sunday. Uh, in the near future, at least in the in the next few weeks, let's say. But that does not mean that we cannot all be united in our love for one another, in the grace that we show to one another in the coming days, um, in the patience that we extend to one another, and in the in the in the in the way that we prefer one another over ourselves. We're going to need lots of that in the coming days, more than we need wisdom when it comes to what actual decisions we should make to reopen our church. Um, you know, I said something along those lines today on, on Facebook. Uh, I just said I, I encouraged Christians to, to prepare now um, to to exercise grace and caution when it comes to airing their opinions about how and when we should reopen our churches. And I want to encourage you as a member of, of this church, as a member of Shepherd's Community Church, I want to encourage you to, to be preparing now to show grace to the leaders of the church, myself included, um, to to those who are going to be responsible for making decisions about our reopening. I want to encourage you to, to show preference to those who um, maybe are at risk in our church and who, who are vulnerable physically in our church. I want to encourage you to give preference to our older saints uh, in our church as we think about how to reopen and um, and try to think about this situation as an opportunity to bear with your brothers and sisters. Um, I'd love to just hit a reset button and get us all back in this room this coming Sunday. And that's just not going to happen. Um, and it's very likely that the way it does happen, the way that we do reopen, you may not agree with. <laughs> You know, in all honesty, you may not agree with it. You may think that we're moving too fast. 
you may think that we're moving way too slow. And I, I understand um, that we are likely not going to handle everything perfectly. I know that's the case. Um, but what I also know is that, that uh, staying unified as a church is actually far more important right now than um, getting us all back into the same room as soon as possible. You know, if anything, uh, or if nothing else, those are those are equal priorities, or should be. Um, I know that not everyone's going to agree with how we do it, and that's okay. That's totally okay. Um, I honestly don't even know how we're going to do it yet. We haven't figured that out yet. We're talking about it. We're praying about it, but we haven't figured it out yet. Um, but more important than those kind of decisions right now, I think, is the fact that that this is a situation that uh, is going to pose the possibility for division and bitterness and frustration and uh, uh, just you know, anger and exasperation with one another. Um, all of us are, are kind of under pressure right now. We're all cooped up. We're ready to get out, ready to get back to it. But um, we're going to need to exercise some serious patience with one another as we try to get back rolling as a church and, and start to reopen. So, um, I you know, what I've done here in this video is what I really don't like to do. Uh, and that is just kind of publicly spitball with you. Um, some of this is, is unorganized. This is just kind of what's on my heart right now. Um, we're going to need to be careful in the coming days and weeks about preserving the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Because if we don't, if we're not careful about that, and uh, instead of preserving unity, we... We make our personal opinions about how to reopen and how to do this, you know, quickly and, and skillfully. If we make that the focus, if we make that the test of fellowship, if we make that the standard of friendship in our church and, and um, fellowship with one another, then when we actually do get to come back as a church all in one place, um, if we haven't been careful to preserve our unity, we're going to have much bigger problems to deal with than simply how far apart we have to stand from each other when we're in the same room. I hope that makes sense. Um, we can deal with the problem, the questions of, of, you know, how much distance needs to be between us when we're in this room, uh, when we're in this building together. We can deal with that. That's that's a small issue in the grand scheme of things. The bigger issue is, are we bearing with one another as we try to get back uh, together as a church? Are we being patient? Are we showing forbearance? Are we being gracious and merciful and believing the best and those kinds of things? Um, I want to encourage you in the coming days, be more concerned about preserving the unity of the Spirit than you are about getting us all in the same room at the same time on the same day, okay? And I'll trust, uh, we'll just trust together that as we focus on unity, uh, unity in the Spirit, God will, will uh, make it clear and in His own time provide a way for us to be unified in body as well, okay? So let's be thinking on those things, practicing those things in the coming days. And uh, we'll look forward to the day when we're all in this room once again, singing to the Lord together, hearing from his word together. I can't wait for that day, and I hope you're getting more excited for that day as well. So I'll leave you with that. Have a great day, and uh, I hope to see you soon, Lord willing. Bye-bye.